Hey there CNCers, Scott here again with CNC Labs, part three for our laser beam videos. Um, in this one, we are going to run you through a couple of different sample projects, some text, uh, probably creating an image and burning an image. We've also got a few more kind of housekeeping things to take care of as well. Um, I wanna first hit on Use those resources, they're on the website. We've got links in the description or you can find them in the resources tab on the CNC website. There's some information that our resident Cyclops, Ikenna, told me all about. Um, so I wanna make sure that we stress and emphasize some of the importance of those things. And part three, and this is maybe not the biggest one, but it's certainly something to keep in mind, especially if you're starting and inexperienced with this, is experiment. You're not going to learn unless you actually get out there and start burning stuff. Uh, different woods burn differently, different settings create different results. The best way to learn is to get this thing hooked up, open up your software, and start messing around. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into Akena's kind of housekeeping must-have setups before you can start playing with the software and start burning projects. Let's dive into those. All right. The first point we want to get to is installing our lens in our focus ring. We want to make sure that for the G2, the G7, and the G8 lens, that the side with the notch, and I'm gonna go over to this camera here so you can see what I'm talking about. The side with the notch, which is there, not the smooth side, okay? The side with the notch fits into our focus ring on the threaded side not the flat side, okay? And the way we try and remember this is, if you had to get a flathead screwdriver in there because it was stuck in your laser, you'd have the notches down. So we take those notches, we line it up with our focus ring, and we just thread it on. Now, it might be a little bit tricky. There might be some paint in the threads of the, of the focus ring, but you can see there's a little notch this will thread into your laser as such. And for the G2, G7, and G8 lenses, that's how we do that. For the three element lens, the 3E, it's a little bit more confusing. There is a notch on that side and notches on this side. The way I've tried to remember it is, I mean, the notches need to be down, but which notches? So these notches are basically touching that lens that's in there very close to the bottom. And if you look closely, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to focus this or not, you can see that there's actually quite a bit of space in between this spot here at the top and the lens itself down below. So this one, the three element lens, same idea, but we're gonna have the side that's closer to the lens with the notches down into our focus ring, not my thumb. Do, do, do. There we go. Thread it in, thread it into our laser. Well, obviously this will, you know, we'll make that work, but that's how we do that. We want to make sure that you're putting it in the right way, because if you don't put it in the right way, it won't focus and your laser's not useless, but it's certainly not going to work the way it's supposed to. Part one. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is point two in the housekeeping side of things. And that is air assist and when to use it and when it's helpful and when it's not. The kind of three things to take away are air assist is really good for thin lines and outlines and for cutting through things. It's not so awesome for engraving. If you check out over here, you can see air assist is on on this one. Air assist was off on this one. So for the first one, I had this guy hooked up to here. My wires were on and the little guy in here can we focus on it yeah so that little tube the air blows through there while you are using your laser and it basically blows away any of the stuff that kind of would get in the way of the laser beam actually penetrating the surface really good in certain circumstances like what we just talked about and uh not so awesome in others so for um thin outlines fine outlines you can't really see too much of the overburn in there when you start to cut stuff and you get to multiple passes like we have here, you start to see that overburn. That's what this stuff is here. So basically the laser was going around, some of the particles were coming up and the fan was clearly blowing in that direction for all of these tests. And it gives you some overburn. Sometimes, not, sometimes that's undesirable. 
but sometimes it can be really helpful when you're trying to cut through layers of wood um, and you're doing those multiple passes if your laser is stepping down you want to be getting all the junk out of the way air assist can be very helpful it can be not so helpful so if you're doing a carving where you don't want that overburn kind of sensation looking there that charred surface you don't have to have it on it's that simple part three uh, and this is where we're going to jump over to the laptop i'm going to fire up that software and we are going to go into light burn and the first thing we need to change when we get in here is it's called an s max value this basically is telling the laser what the maximum value it can it can produce is. so right up here we have the wrench and the screwdriver icon we're going to click on that and in there, you are going to change your S max value to 255. I can't tell you what it was originally because I set this up a month ago and I don't remember. It needs to be 255. It's basically the mathematical perfect number to divide things up. We are also going to open up G sender. And look at that, I already got it sitting there. You're gonna to go to line dollar sign 30, your maximum spindle speed. This needs to correspond to what you have set up in Lightburn. So it might be 100 as default. It needs to match. 255 is the number that we kind of roll with. As long as they match, you should be okay. But again, 255, 255 is that perfect number. You also have to have $31, your minimum spindle speed at zero. Not one, not two. It's got to be zero. While we're here, you can enable your laser mode as spindle if you haven't done that yet in G-Center. And then you are going to apply your new settings, which they're not new for me because they're already there. And you're going to X out. Those are the three things that we need to do before we start burning and start going into the software. Next, we're going to dive over into Lightburn itself. I'll give you a quick rundown on some of the settings, some of the options, some of the experiences, some of the tips and hints. Uh, and then we're going to go through a couple really quick, simple projects of text and an image. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some fun burning some stuff. Let's go do it. All righty. Housekeeping's done. We want to have some fun. We've got light burn open up on our laptop. We are going to dive into that in just a second. The only kind of thing that I can give as a tip is the same thing for carving. Make sure you have an idea of kind of what you're planning on doing. Make sure you've got a piece of wood that's going to fit what you're trying to carve. I've got, you know, this old chunk of barn board for the text one, I think, and a hunk of cherry for the image. Know your rough size, know your dimensions, know your wood type, you'll get there. <laughs> Just so that you're not trying to create something and you're like, oh man, I don't have the right materials. That's it. So, for light burn. It's pretty simple. We've got our tool palette over here on the left, everything from drawing shapes and text and measuring. Uh, you've got some alignment and some array tools over here. Oh, sorry, that's what this guy's for, right? There you go, sorry. Some of your design tools up here, some of your array tools over here. If you wanna mess around with settings, those are up here. So that's a little cog, gear cog. So in there, you can mess with either your units, uh, what you're comfortable with. Most people are going by, you know, Imperial or metric by the second. Um, if you want to mess around with the other stuff, knock yourselves out. So the other settings that we have to mess around with are right up here with the wrench and the screwdriver. We're gonna give that a whirl. In here, you can set up your working size, your the actual size of your board, uh, your work surface, as it were. The origin is one that I found out the hard way. If you change this, it will mirror or reflect your work surface when it saves out your G-code. So unless you want to do that or there's a reason for it, I would leave it as the bottom left one. If you do mess with it and you find something's wrong or something's weird, that's why. Uh, you're going to want to enable your Z axis height control if you are looking to step down. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, basically, it's just an offset to drop your uh, laser closer down to your surface if you're cutting. And the last one is to, again, make sure that S max value is 255 that's really important so let's make sure that's set up we're gonna okay out of here and i'm going to show you this z axis thing really quick so if you drew a line and it automatically populated your file now you have number of passes right here and the z depth or the z step per pass and the way you calculate this is the number of passes that you're going to go around 
divided by the depth that you want to go down will give you your Z depth or Z step per pass. Does that make sense? Number of passes divided by depth equals the step down. I think that's all for this menu. We're gonna okay out of here and we're gonna keep on going. I th think that's about it. So let's start with a text project. We're gonna come over here. We are going to just create some text and I'm gonna say light my fire. Woo. Thank you, Jim Morrison and the doors. Um, this is very similar to like kind of CNC software where you're going to have your work surface all around in here. And here's obviously our text that we've created. Um, I am an Imperial guy. I grew up woodworking with my dad 30 years ago, so he stuck Imperial in me and I've stuck with it. If you're a metric person, really quick and easy way to change that is right here beside the rotate. There's a little inch or millimeters. See that? Woo! Um, I, it's funny, I measure in Imperial, but when I'm talking speeds, I use metric. There's no rhyme or reason. So we got light by fire. We are gonna zoom in a little bit here, and then you can change your font to whatever you want. I don't need that, thanks malware bites. Get out of here. We can change it to whatever we want. Let's find something, is there anything fun? There we go, light my fire. When you create text, it's I believe automatically going to drop in over here in this layers and cuts pop out. Um, it's gonna assign something automatically. Here's where some settings start to come in. So if you double click on that, you're going to see that you have all the control settings for the layers right in here. There's another other way to change this and that's these guys way down here at the bottom. There's a bunch of different settings. And if you click on those, it'll give you different options because it assigned this one, we're gonna roll with it. I'm going with the Akena mentioned 25.4 millimeters per second for speed. Your max power can be anywhere from like you said, uh, you know, zero to a hundred, depending on what you're doing and what you've experimented with. I have experimented with all of it. You get different results for all of it. I did a bunch of burn tests. I post some of those on Instagram and Facebook. There's a reason I did that so that I know at what speed and what power and what material I'm gonna get for a result so that you're not guessing every single time. Speaking of power settings, you can control the power of your laser or you know how hot it burns through the speed parameters in Lightburn and the properties there. Uh, the faster you go, typically the less powerful it will become because it's moving faster. Um, the slower you go, the more powerful it becomes because it's moving slower. There are there is another way that you can control the power or, you know, ah, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. The power of the laser is with our driver. So I'm going to shoot over here and on our driver, that's what these dip switches are for. So if you recall in the previous video, I, I, I touched on them briefly. Um, we're going to touch a little bit more on them here just so you know what's going on. They're basically in increments of 20% power. So one's going to give you 20%, five's going to give you 100. That is not a mathematical, like, guarantee but that's kind of what common sense kicks in again you want to have them down is the power that you're going to select so if you're using 100 percent power you're going to want to have your five all the way down that's just another way that you can control the power of the laser on top of using light burn so that's a that's why that seat time thing is so important because you can read all about it but until you see it in the real world you know aspect of things you don't know what happens. So two ways to control your power. I believe there's a third, but I can't remember. So I'm going to look into that for you. For this case, because we're going to do an outline and we want to make sure it's going to burn in there. I'm going to go for hundred percent. Why not? A number of passes. This is going to come in handy when you want to start cutting through materials. Again, you're not cutting through two inch walnut with this laser. You're cutting through quarter inch, you know, uh, what's that stuff even called? Hardy board, MDF, plywood. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to knock that down to one, not 41, one, which means that the Z step per path is nothing because I'm not actually making any path. I'm not like cutting down. I'm just making an outline. I feel like I might need to redo this part because so far it's not going so hot. So everything else in there, we shouldn't have to worry about. I'm trying to whip through this. You can have air assist on or off. I have heard 
here and there that when air assist is on, it can actually cause some weird glitchy stuff, but I have not experienced it myself. Maybe that was older stuff. You can turn it on, turn it off. It doesn't actually affect having the air assist module on your laser itself. So for giggles, we'll leave it on. We're gonna say okay to that. So in my infinite wisdom, going through editing the video, I realized that I missed one kind of important chunk of the settings and light burn. Uh, right over here, you can see the mode uh, drop down right there. Uh, you have the option for line, fill, or fill plus line, and then offset fill. Um, I haven't actually monkeyed around with offset fill yet, and I couldn't tell you what it does, so that's my next experiment. In the meantime, the line, fill, and fill plus offset are fairly self-explanatory, so what we see on my screen right now with this light my fire thing, that's clearly just going to go as a line. You could fill, and it would obviously go back and forth and fill it all in, or you can do fill plus line, which has certain, uh, you know, it has its place in certain applications. Uh, so that's something else to consider when you are monkeying around in light burn. So if you double click on that, you can change it uh, in your mode in here as well. And the other kind of important thing, you know, is seeing what it's going to look like before you actually go and burn it, which is your preview, which I also forgot to do. So here we are. Uh, the magic of film. Uh, if you right click in your workspace, you can go to this preview down here. And when you bring that up, it shows you, ironically enough, a preview of what you're going to be burning. Um, you can monkey around with the playback speed. Uh, you can invert from here if you really want to. Again, certain applications, that's going to work out for you. You can save an image of your preview and you can play it to see what it's going to look like and how it's going to go. Uh, it gives you, just like our carving software, total estimated time of how long it's going to take. So some of the settings that we have do, 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 up in our properties here. So if you change the line interval, we'll say, that actually controls kind of the amount of detail. So I apologize that I'm bouncing around a little bit here. <laughs> Not thrilled about it myself, but you know, here we are, so we're gonna make it work. Yeah, those couple of things are gonna make a difference in what you're doing. So yeah, those are some extra properties that are gonna come in handy. That preview one obviously is going to be extremely important when you're messing around with images. We'll cover some of the details for that in the next one. Uh, but as for now, we're gonna keep on chugging and pretend like I didn't miss this the first time. From here, and again, I'm going through this kind of quick because it's not really too crazy difficult. You're gonna pop some text in there. You're gonna change the font to whatever you want. You can change the spacing if you want it to be a little further apart or any of that stuff. You can mess with the kerning. Once you've got that in place, you're going to go down to this area here and you can see in here that you can change where your job origin is from. So you can change it from current position user and absolute. I have it as job origin. I usually work from my bottom left. Some people, you know, there's different reasons to change that. That's where you'll find that setting. The device is something I didn't actually go through. We probably should. So you can go in here and you can actually connect this to, it's just like connecting G-Center. You, which way is it? Either, I think if you open G-Center first and then you open this, light burn, uh, it won't let you connect or vice versa. One way or the other, it messes with you. You don't really need to worry about cutting right from light burn because we save our file as G-Code and then we go into G-Center. Gerbil, gerbil, whichever you say. <laughs> that is the setting that we're using for that. And I don't think I've missed anything else. So from here, we're going to save our G code. This is just like, you know, um, Carveco, VCarve. It's just like any of this, the, the software for that. It says it might be out of bounds and continue anyway. I don't know why it would say that. I haven't come up with a good reason because I've literally burned a hundred things and it seems to come up every time. Somebody knows what's going on? Let me know in the comments. Yes, because we're going to want to cut anyways. We're going to call this Light My Fire and we are going to add the NC extension in there just to force it to be a light burn file the way we want it. We're going to hit enter. From here, we're going to dive over to Gsender, which is already connected to my machine, which is awesome. I'm going to load my file just like you would with anything else. And I'm going to find light my fire. 
And there it is. So I'm going to go top down. There is light my fire. Pretty awesome. I think the next thing we're going to have to do is show you guys how to focus this laser. So I think I got to move a camera around because I want to show you what exactly I'm tweaking down there. And uh, then we'll hop back on to how we're doing that and then we'll actually burn this thing. Stay tuned. So before I show you guys how I focus the laser and find my coordinates, uh, we just need to go over the very cool spindle laser test tab within G Sender. It, <laughs> it's exactly what it's for. We haven't actually turned on our laser since we've all hooked it up to ensure that there is light shining through it and it's doing its job. We're not worried about focus here. We're just worried about function and making sure that it works. So over here in G-Sender, you'll see that we have a laser on and a laser off button. Pretty self-explanatory. In the middle, we have laser test. A laser test basically is just, again, to make sure that our light turns on and off. The power function can go from zero to 100. Because we're just testing function, we don't need it to be very powerful, so we leave it at 1%. Big asterisk here too, this only affects the laser test. This does not affect your dim switches and what you have them at. This does not affect your G code or your light burn files and the settings that you set there. It is only for the laser test. The last one is test duration. Pretty self-explanatory. You can change it from whatever you want, zero to 10 seconds or even longer if you really need it while you're dialing in your focus next. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. So we'll fire it up and just give you a quick tutorial. Here goes my driver and my Terminator glasses. You don't have to even hit laser on, you just have to hit laser test. You look at your laser to make sure it turns on. It's gonna turn off after two seconds and we're gonna be off and running. Ta-da! Laser test, done. Time to focus and burn some stuff. Okay, so here we are now. Uh, this is, um, I'm gonna run you guys through my process of how I focus my laser find my X and my Y coordinates, and also making sure that my Z or Z height is uh, done properly. I am going to flip on the driver. I'm gonna also put on my fancy new glasses. Make sure that I'm being safe because that laser is gonna come on and it can damage your eyes. So just one quick note about the dip switch that I show here. I've got mine set on five when I'm focusing my laser. If you're not quite comfortable, if you're a little less experienced, you may want to switch it down to one. It just limits the amount of power that your laser is actually going to shoot while it's focusing. Safety first, folks. First thing I want to do is find my Z height, Z height, my laser to my material, whatever it is, wood, cardboard, MDF, whatever. We give you this handy dandy little height finder. You want to find basically halfway between here, these heights, and these heights. Um, I have found that about halfway up on the focus ring that's here seems to work really well. Um, but again, dial it in to what works for you. Um, I'm going to hop over into G Sender and I am going to use my Z height to move that guy up and down. I am going to turn my laser on after I get this figured out because then I can know that my focus is at the right height. So here we go. You can see there's lots of space here, way too much. We are going to start to move this down. Whoop. There we go. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Still lots of room. Still lots of room. All right, we're pretty close now. So we're gonna flip this thing on its side and you can see that there's even more room. So we're gonna go about halfway, like I said, up on that focus ring. And that's going to give you the approximate right height that you're looking for. Cool. Phase one. Phase two is, uh, like I said, I have a piece of scrap wood that is the same height as the piece of wood that I'm going to use for my final so that I know that when I've got this focused that this isn't going to be a different height than this and it's going to throw it out of focus. So that's why I do that. Move that off to the side. Here's my piece. I'm going to turn my laser on and I'm going to turn this focus ring back and forth. It's going to go from a wide beam to basically a pinhole and when it does that I'm going to know that it's right. Uh, it's focused. 
Uh, once it's focused and I'm, I can kind of move it around and see that it is doing what I want it to do, I'm going to move this right over to the very edge and I'm going to have that laser pointing on the corner of this so I know that that's where I can zero out G sender. So let's flip on our laser. Let's make sure we're doing it on top of some wood. There we go. See, it's a big wide beam. You may not be able to see that easily on the video because it may not, I can't tell if it's showing up. Uh, but when you're doing it, it'll look like basically a long rectangle. And the more you twist this focus ring, the more it will start to turn into pinholes. And you can see that it does not take very long to start burning in this project. And if you move it slowly, you can actually start to draw a picture by hand. Um, safety first, folks. That laser will slice you, it will burn you. It is a laser, so don't put anything that you don't want burned under it, okay? Now here's what I was talking about. I'm going to move it over to, and do this without burning myself. I'm used to using my right hand. I'm gonna move it right over the corner of my piece of wood, and I can see that it's right on the corner. I am going to turn my laser off. I know where my laser is pointing up and down right now. I'm going to grab a speed square. I know that my table's pretty good, so I'm going to just nudge it up there gently. I know that that is approximately square and it is approximately zeroed to where my X and my Y coordinates are. Here's my cheat. I'm going to hold this down and I'm just going to draw a quick couple of lines. That tells me where my laser is currently lined up, both on my Z height, because these are the same, and my X and my Y. I can grab my final project piece, I can do that, and now I know where I'm starting from. I'm going to go over to G Sender, and I'm going to zero all, and now I have my project basically ready to go. I have it focused, I have the right height, and I have my X and my Y coordinates. The next thing I'm going to go into is actually burning this thing. Do I want to change my cameras or am I good where I'm set up? I know everybody wants to see my beautiful face. I think I'm going to burn it and we're going to go from there. So over in G Sender, I'm going to hit this outline button just to make sure that what I have is going to work. And I just realized that I made it bigger than my actual project is. So I may have to rotate my piece of wood. Yoink. Because that should give me the approximately five inches I need. Yep. That's called learning on the fly. So here we go. Now I've got my X and my Y. That's why I draw my lines. I know that my project will fit on this. I am going to hit that outline button. And it's going to show me where it's going to make my text. In this particular case, it's a little bit low on my piece of wood, so to keep it square, I'm gonna bump my set square back in, and I'm gonna actually just drop it down an inch or so. I'm gonna hit the outline button again. It's gonna show me the outline of where it's going to burn the project. I'm reasonably happy with that, and I mean, if I hit burn and it's not right, then too bad, so sad, we'll start again. So I'm gonna click on the start job button over here, and we're gonna watch this thing go. That was real time, folks. That took like 30 seconds. Now, I did not put my air assist on. I should have put my air assist on. If you look at this up close, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see it too easily without messing up my cameras. You can see some spots are, focus baby. You can see some spots didn't burn quite as nicely as they should have, just like the example I showed you. So. I'm gonna run it again, quite honestly, because it didn't take any time. 
and I haven't moved my project. So I know that I can run it again and it will do the exact same spot again. So I can flip this off now and I'm going to move my machine out of the way. And you can see that there are still some spots that aren't perfect. You know, the bottom of the M there is a little bit off as far as it didn't burn or the, the bottom of the Y there is, you know, it didn't burn all the way where air assist can come in handy. So the first example shows you what an outline would look like. This example is showing you what it would look like filled in. Obviously it's going to take a little bit longer. So I kind of, uh, you know, sped it up because nobody wants to sit here and watch it burn for nine minutes. You can do that in your own shop. So that's text. That's the basics of the laser. Get out there and play. And uh, next we're going to find a little image to do. Alrighty, now we're back for the image portion of this tutorial. I am going to do my best to not forget things this time, but there's a good chance I'm still going to. So, we have Lightburn open. We are basically going to import an image, make sure our property settings are where they want or where we want them to be. There's some uh, image adjustment that you can mess around with within Lightburn that can be helpful, and there are previews that we want to look through. So that's kind of the process. We'll save our G-code out. We'll open it up in um, um, G-Sender. We'll let it burn. This one's going to take a little bit longer, so we're probably just going to take video of it burning and then speed it up and then chat at the end. So we'll get right to it. We are going to go to the import button to bring in the picture that we want. I happen to have already been messing around with this, so I am going to burn a picture of my super cute puppy sleeping in front of my shop. This image is giant, so I do not want to make it that big. It would take forever to burn. If you do, knock yourself out. There are lots of different ways to control what you're doing. As usual, you can scale it here. You can go up to the height and width. In this particular case, I know that the piece of wood I'm playing with is roughly two inches, two and a half. Oh, sorry, my height, not my width. Two and a half inches. And you can, again, manually move it around or you can use your X and Y position. So my X should be zero, my Y should be 2.5 because that's how tall it is. And then I can zoom in. So that's what I'm dealing with as far as the size of my image. The next thing we want to mess around with is over here in our properties panel. You can see it automatically assigned a layer to it. All these ones down here um, have different properties in them. This is the one that they choose for image when you bring it in. If you double click on it, it'll bring up your properties. It already has the 25.4 millimeters per second. It already has 100% power. Experimentation. My driver, uh, I, I already did a test on this one. So uh, I used 100% power and I had my driver on five. It produced pretty decent results. Here, let's just grab it and show you. Can we see how dark it is? There we go. It produced pretty decent results. It's a little darker than I would like in some spots. But, experimentation. So, when I do it this time, I might change the settings from what I did originally. I might just do it again. Uh, within the properties, this line interval. We'll talk about that one in a second. And you can see that it didn't, there's no uh, Z offset because this particular layer property does not have it automatically default too. For image mode, right here, we are going to use Jarvis. It seems to be the one that people use for burning images. It's just the way it interprets the image. It's different than, you know, text or font. That's pretty much it for our settings. We'll get into that line interval in a second. So I'm gonna okay here. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, I'll run through just a quick preview. So we right click on our image and we go to preview again, and it's gonna bring it up. And this is kind of the interpretation of what it's going to look like. Again, it doesn't look super much like my image. It's close. 
but you can see some of the highlights show up a little better in the burn and some of the darks are a little darker. Uh, I have a trick for that that I'm gonna show you guys. So you can see that this says about 35 minutes to burn with our current settings. Cool. Get rid of that. We're gonna right click on our image again and go down to adjust image. So this is where you can start to mess with the contrast and the brightness and some of that stuff. So we're gonna go in there and it brings you up your original on the left and your preview on the right. And you can start to see that there are some other settings down here. So there, again, this is a personal taste thing. This is an experimentation thing. Um, you can just mess around with it. The last time I did this for my test, I bumped up the, or the contrast. I left the brightness. I messed with the gamma a little bit. The enhance amount and the enhance radius is basically kind of like refining the detail in your image. And you'll see that if you click up a little bit, if you don't have any enhance amount on, the enhanced detail won't do anything. So you need to have it on at a certain amount. And then you can see if you change the enhanced radius, you'll see it starts to kind of clean up your image. Whoop, clicking like a madman. So you can see that it starts to mess around with your image, make it look a little, makes it look a little bit good. Unfortunately, the amount of detail we can see when we zoom in a little bit is starting to get a little blurry. And this is where that line interval can come in. Great big asterisk on the line interval. Point one is the default setting. It can work pretty nicely. That's what the sample that I showed you was burnt at. But watch what happens if you change that to point oh five. Whoop! Oh, I forgot. And you hit enter, it does that. Sorry. Ready? Let's go back to point one, just so you guys can see the direct comparison. Point one, there it is, right? And then if you change it to point zero five, see how it cleans that detail up? It comes, and this is where the asterisk comes in it's gonna probably double your speed. Or sorry, it's gonna double your length to burn. So let's sit, hit okay. And then let's go back into our preview. And we're gonna see, yeah, instead of 35 minutes, we're now an hour and 10. Find your balance, find what you care about, find what looks good, because more detail doesn't always look better, right? This is that seat time. So it's not that you can't learn from reading settings and online forums and people's recommendations, 100%. That's what I do. That's, you know, that's, that's the basis for knowing what you're messing with. However, actually going in and changing those settings within the program, actually burning stuff. That's what I meant when I said earlier, experimentation, seat time. It's not that you can't learn. It's that until you do it yourself, you don't see the results firsthand right there for yourself. So read, research, experiment. Cool. So, there's our image. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to go through as fast as I did the text one because I made a bunch of mistakes. I'm going to okay out of this. That's kind of it though. Um, I'm going to go back into my adjust image properties just to look over them a little more. I don't think I really, I mean like you can bump up the amount and the radius, you can bump it down. Again, this is personal taste and preference and time um, balance. I, I think I might give this a whirl like this. I know it's gonna take an hour to burn instead of 35 minutes, but I wanna see what the difference is between detail and not detailed. I may bump up the contrast a little bit more because I found my original image was a little dark. I guess I could do the brightness instead and then put the contrast down. I don't know. I have a feeling the only way I'm gonna find out is if I hit okay. So I'm gonna hit okay. We can save our file. I'm gonna call this Luna Sleep. And it's gonna automatically default to a light burn file. And we're gonna save that to my desktop. I don't think I need to show you guys anything else within Lightburn. That's, it's, it, it's not that tricky. It's a matter of knowing what settings are gonna create what output. So we are going to go into save our G code now. It again tells me about the overscan settings. I'm gonna look into that and maybe I'll post in the comments this time. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna save this as Luna Sleep, and I'm gonna force that NC extension on it. I'm gonna say yes, it already exists, and I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna save over my original one because I don't care about it. I'm gonna hop over into G Sender. I'm gonna load my Luna Sleep file right up there. I'm gonna hit open, 
and it's going to look like a big scribbly rectangle. That's your router going back and forth, right? So there we go. Uh, because I've already lined this up yesterday, and look at that, the back side has a piece of cactus burnt on it from the other project I was messing with. I think, because I forgot to set up my other camera, I'm going to have to go do that. Okie doke. We have G-Sender open. We are going to load the file we just saved out of Lightburn. It's going to come up as a bunch of squiggly, squiggly, rectangly lines, because that's our CNC moving back and forth. There's my top view. Cool. I'm going to run through really quick my setup on how I get my laser focused and my piece of wood in this case placed. And then we will start burning this thing and I'll fast forward to the end of it because it's going to take a while. So we're going to dump, jump over. We're going to dump over here. No, we're going to jump over here. S scrap piece to test your laser and your focus the same height at the very least as the piece you're going to actually burn it on. I am going to not use air assist because I'm doing an image and I found it doesn't really make too much of a difference. I am going to put on my fancy Cyclops glasses. Ready? Check me out. Boom. I am going to turn my driver on so the hummingbird's going to come back. I am going to focus my laser and get my position set and then I'll start burning. There we go. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to get my G2 height adjustment out. Here we go. So yet again, I'm going to move things down a little bit slower now. There we go. I can move it around. I know I'm blocking the screen, but I don't care because it's a lot easier than doing it swap a hand, which is what I did last time. Sure, we'll try it. There we go. Where'd my mouse go? There we go. That's my height. I'm going to flip my laser on so I can start focusing. It's probably pretty good. Right? Drawing some pretty tiny pinholes. When I start to dry, move that around, that's a pretty tiny line. I'm going to move it over to the corner of my workpiece like I showed you guys previously. I'm going to turn my laser off. I'm going to get my set square in there. Maybe I should do that first, eh? I don't know. If you guys come up with a better way of doing it, you let me know. It's pretty square. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to switch hands so that I'm not blocking the camera. I'm going to draw my lines. I'm going to put my good piece in. I'm going to line it up. And I, I haven't found that I, I care yet if these are perfectly placed. So I'm not really worried about it. I now am going to zero all. I'm going to hit the outline button to make sure that it's going to go where I want it to go. It takes a minute depending on how big your file is. There, 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 there. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit because I can see that it's and I can actually move it over a little bit. There we go. Now I know that when I start this, oh, hold on. Now I know that when I start to burn that thing, it's gonna be offset from the corner a little bit, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I think that's all she wrote. It's focused. It's at the right height. My piece is placed. My file is loaded. I've done my outline to make sure it's gonna fall within my workpiece. I am probably going to start the job now. It's going to take an hour. And I might talk a little bit while it's going, I might not. So I'm going to put my glasses back on and I'm going to get this thing going. See you on the flip side.
So there you have it, laser beam in a nutshell. You can see that it doesn't take a ton of effort to get a pretty decent image in a short amount of time. I'm pretty happy with how mine turned out. There's one uh, other little hint that I guess I can give is if you leave your piece in place when it's done burning, you can start to layer on the three dimensional effect that you get when you're burning. So your blacks can go darker into the wood and you will start to see some contours to this. Uh, I didn't expect it to look as cool as it does when I started playing with this thing and it's got a really cool effect to it. So uh, it's just something else to play with. We've covered pretty much everything I can think of. Your shop's gonna smell lovely when you're burning, which is, you know, a good thing for once when you're using a CNC. If we've uh, missed anything, if you wanna see us cover anything in another video, or if you have any questions, drop it in the questions below and we'll have a look. And other than that, we've got more content coming out, so make sure you're subscribed and thanks for watching. We'll see you around the CNC.